Hey GearSeekers, I'm Nick. MSI challenged us to build a B560 based system for some memory overclocking. So that's kind of exactly what we did here today. I built this MSI based B560 board with an 11900K to see how far we could push this memory. Obviously this is just a regular build video with some stuff talking about this memory tried overclocking stuff. But first, here's a word from this video sponsor. This video is proudly brought to you by MSI and their Memory Triad Overclocking Competition. Think you've got what it takes to be the god of overclocking? MSI is proud to unveil a new DDR4 memory overclocking competition for the latest MSI B560 series motherboards. We're calling on anyone who wants to show the world what they've got when it comes to memory overclocking even if it's your first time trying it out. With easy to use MSI exclusive BIOS tools such as Memory Try It, and with thousands of dollars worth of prizes up for grabs, anyone in selected countries stands a chance to win. Links to enter the competition are below in the description and check out MSI's terms and conditions for full details. The idea for this build was really to, obviously because the video is sponsored by MSI, use MSI parts, but pick some hardware that I thought would be good for memory overclocking. So that's what I did. Let's see how it came together.
ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this build. In, actually, this is a new deep cool case. This is the Matrex 43FS. I pulled out the stock fans and whatnot. And obviously I'm probably gonna come back and review this case on its own a little bit later, but I really wanted to do this build in a new case that we haven't used before because yeah, I wanted to kind of show off these MSI parts as well. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I did to get the memory to the speed that I did with this just quickly without wasting too much time to show you guys what you can do with overclocking memory because unlike older generation B series boards like from MSI and Intel, you can now overclock memory quite high with B560. So let me show you my settings in the BIOS. We're here in the BIOS in the MSI MAG B560M motor Wi-Fi, as you can see here. And you can see that I'm running the 11th gen Intel Core i9-11900K. We've got this 16 gig kit of the G School Triton Z Royal that I showed a bit earlier on in the video. And yeah, we're gonna just walk through a couple of the overclocking settings. So if we actually get out of advanced mode for a sec, we can take a look at the memory. So you can see here, we've got this 5333 kit. The timings are a little bit loose on this kit. So you've got your cast latency of 22 and then 32, 32, 52 at 1.6 volt. Now this board is rated only to run a maximum of around 5066 to 5200 megahertz on memory, but, uh, each CPU is different with the IMC, so higher clocked CPUs and faster CPUs like the 11900K sometimes don't allow you to overclock memory quite as high. So I'm going to just switch back to advanced mode and we're going to show you the settings that I found to work with this kit and this CPU combo. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can use MSI's memory try it and if we look through the settings here, it'll actually go through and show you every single possible setting all the way up to 5600 megahertz. Now it's not gonna run at that speed. I've already tested this. I've done a bit of playing around to get this to work. So the fastest we can go with this CPU and RAM and motherboard combo is 4800 megahertz, which is still quite fast for this. But with this memory try it preset, it actually doesn't quite work because as I mentioned with silicon quality between CPUs and RAM combinations, it can have a bit of difference. So the optimal settings I found for this kit, I'm actually gonna do a manual overclock. So we're not gonna enable XMP at all. We're not gonna use the default memory try it setup. However, we are going to base it on a memory try it preset. So we're gonna go down to 4,800 megahertz CL19 and we're gonna just dial in the settings a little bit because with a cast latency of 19, it's gonna crash out because I've already tested it. Like I said, difference between silicon quality and whatnot. So if I go to advanced DRAM configuration, I've got a few settings here. Now, these settings here, these work fine, right? These timings are fine. It is a little bit tighter than the factory timing here, but what we need to do is loosen up the cast latency. So 19 is too tight. So we drop it down to 22 and we should be in business. And that's all I needed to do to get it to work at this speed. And this is the fastest and tightest I could get out of this kit. So let's uh, save those settings and we'll see if we boot up. All right, looks like we're in business ladies and gents. Windows is booting up. In Windows, we can actually take a look at the speed of the RAM as well. You can actually just open up task manager, click performance and click memory. And you can see that we are running at 4,800 megahertz. Now I've done a little bit of testing of this as well for stability and it is rock solid with those timings. So if you wanna enter the memory try it overclocking competition and you've got a RAM kit like this, this is where I would start and then work your way to go a little bit faster. I didn't actually try and spend too much time overclocking the living snot out of this memory kit. I reckon with this 5333 kit from G-Skill, I could probably push it a bit further if I used this board. Now, I actually have another build planned, an ITX one with this memory because I kind of want to get it all the way up there. There's a couple factors as to why uh, I couldn't get the memory overclock 
all the way up to its maximum speed and beyond is one uh, ITX boards are uh, typically better for memory overclocking. So that's why I wanna give this another crack on this board here. I'm gonna do this next week. Yeah, there will be a whole nother video about it, I reckon, because I think it's pretty interesting, especially if you wanna try and win some prizes. I can show you guys how to attempt to win the prizes with an ITX board. And the other thing is, I think the CPU, uh, well, the 9900K is just a little bit too hungry for memory overclocking. I think an 11600K, 11600, 11700K will be a lot better for memory overclocking. So we're going to give that a crack again. Let us know if it's something you guys want to see, but too bad. I'm doing it anyway, because I want to know if it's going to go a bit further. And we're going to be building that in a very, very, very special case. You'll see. You'll see, that's coming next week. Let's quickly chat about the parts in this system because you guys would probably wanna know. The CPU is the Intel Core i9-11900K. We put the 11900K on the MSI MAG B560M Mortar Wi-Fi. To cool the 11900K, we use the Fantex Glacier One 240MP the black edition. The RAM is 16 gigs of G-Skill Triton Z Royal at 5333 megahertz. This is the fastest RAM kit that we own. It is absolutely ridiculously expensive and it is ridiculously fast. I still want to get this thing to run at 5333. It's gonna happen, I'm gonna do it. The GPU is the MSI RTX 3070 Ti Gaming X Trio. This is the first time we've actually used this GPU for anything. I've had it here for a little while and I was like, you know what, this is the perfect time to crack it out for a build. The fans are deep cool CF120 plus ARGB fans. We've used these a couple times and I decided to use them because I just feel like they look better than those other fans which have Molex connectors. Yep, <laughs> you know how I feel about Molex connectors on fans already. The cables are a custom white and silver cable mod kit. I wanted to use a black and silver kit but I don't have them and the only uh, cable kit that I've got with silver in them to match the aesthetics of this build was this one. But you know what, I actually think it looks fine. What do you reckon Claire? I think it looks fine. I think it looks cool. Just, it mixes it up a little bit, yeah. especially because like the heat sinks and stuff are like silver, but they're kind of shifted more towards white. So I think it, it it's suits. It's a nice contrast. Yeah, it's a nice contrast. Something a little bit different. As I already mentioned, the case is the new Deep Cool Matrex 43FS. Like, again, we'll have a full review on this case coming in the next week or so, because I want to show you guys everything with the case, but yeah. For this video, I wanted to use something fresh. Fresh. I'll put a full PC part picker list down below in the description if you're interested in every part in this build. Uh, special thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. I actually had a lot of fun trying to just squeeze this memory as hard as I could make it go. Again, I didn't spend heaps of time trying to push it as far as I could, but I'm going to spend more time on this when I do a cheeky little ITX build. Because as I mentioned, ITX boards are way better for memory overclocking, so yeah. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available over on Patreon. And that's just about gonna do it. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek, and it's time to engage cinematic mode. Again, thanks to MSI and thanks for watching.